Thanks, Zach. All right. I know there's a lot of people sick. I know Becca, she's been down for a couple weeks now. Zach was telling me today that Pastor Chris is out. and So I just encourage you guys uh, this week that you just continue to pray for those that are... Uh, yeah, <laughs> suffering. <laughs> Luckily, it, it hasn't come to our house, who's Lord. Uh, and I know some places it hasn't been, so just, just continue to pray for God's grace. We're going to be in the book of Haggai today. And if, and, uh, there is children's church, so if you want to uh, let your children go to children's church, please exit quietly. Uh, and uh, there's going to be a lot of fun over there. Now, if you don't know where Hey Guys at, it's between Zephaniah and Zechariah. <laughs> I hope that helped. On my book, it's page 1476, so I'm sure that's not where it is in your book. But, two chapters, and we're going to look at uh, the message that Haggai has. Actually, there's four messages that Haggai has for it, and I'm going to read... I doubt I'm going to get to all four, but I'm going to at least try to do the first two messages that he has. Uh, I want to read a couple of verses, we'll pray, and I want to give you a little background, and then we'll go forward. So this is Haggai chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. It says, In the second year of Darius the king, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah. To Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, This people says the time has not come, even the time for the house of the Lord to be rebuilt. Then the word of the, uh, the Lord came to Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourself to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies desolate? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Lord, we uh, again just thank you for this morning. We pray for those that are not here due to illness. Pray, God, you just continue to touch them, uh, restore them. Uh, pray for us in this room here today, God, that you'd give us ears to hear. That you'd give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And, and not only ears to hear, but a heart to obey and to be doing what you're telling us today. So we just again commit this morning to you and we pray that you, God, would be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So a little bit of background. There's two books that I uh, want to talk about, Nehemiah and Ezra. Nehemiah, if you remember, uh, is about the rebuilding of the walls in Jerusalem. It's also about social reform and some religious reforms. The Ezra, it's about the rebuilding of the temple itself. At one time, both of these books were one. But Ezra, he's talking about rebuilding the temple. And he's also talking about proper worship within that temple. <laughs> and I'm sure you're asking yourself, what's Haggai about? Well, Haggai was, actually, if you look at, at Ezra chapter 5, verse 1, we'll see that that Haggai was a prophet that was speaking to the people during uh, uh, Ezra's time. We read in Ezra chapter 1 in 538 B.C. as a result of the proclamation of, of Sir, the Sirius, uh, the, uh, the proclamation of Sirius the Persian, Israel was allowed to return to Babylon to her home country under the leadership of Zerubbabel, and the spiritual guidance of Joshua the high priest at this time. And, and in 536, Ezra 3 and 4, they began to rebuild the temple. But opposition from their neighbors, indifference by Israel, had caused the work to be abandoned. They started, but they, they got tired. Life started happening. And for the next 16 years, the temple work had stopped. And Haggai was sent by the Lord to tell him two things. It's time to rebuild the temple. It's time to finish what you started. And that, that it was time to reorder your spiritual priorities. There's two things that he's trying to tell us. Hey, finish the job. Reorder the things of your life. Sometimes life, we get caught up in life and we get caught up in the, the things that we do and the places that we're going and it's, 
it's chaotic. This whole week, it's just been a blur to me. And, and some of the things that, that I wanted to do, I didn't get done. And we've got to make things a priority. Amen. Amen. This is what Vision 2020 is about. Hmm. Reading, meeting, and tithing. You got to make them a priority. You got you got to make God's word a priority in your life. And you know what? Amen. You're going to get to the end of the day. It's going to be ten thirty at night. You're going to be exhausted, and you're not going to have time to read God's word. That's just how the world is going to work. The adversary roars like a roaring lion, seeking to someone to devour, and he is purposely giving you a lot of good stuff to do. But he's drawing you away from the things that you're supposed to do. And you got to order your priorities in your life. Right. Same thing reading. Same thing with me. Gosh, I'm so tired. It's Wednesday night. I've been out Monday night. I've been out Tuesday night. I'm going, I'm going to be out on, on, on Thursday night. I'm just going to stay home. You got to you got to you got to make you got to make some pride. You got to make some choices. You got to make some changes. If you don't, you're going to get to December, and these three things that we're doing, you're just going to. Oh yeah, I knew I was supposed to do something. And Ezra was telling the people of Israel, it's time to do, time to rebuild the temple. That's what you were called to do. Time to uh, reorder your spiritual priorities. And as a result, the temple, as a result of Ezra's words, the temple was rebuilt in the next four years. I'm looking at Ezra 6.15. You know, it lay in ruins for 70 years. If you remember, Nebuchadnezzar came in, 586, knocked it down. And I know I'm, I, these dates, I, it depends on who you're listening to. Some of the dates... They give or take a, day, a year or two. But these were the dates that I chose. But that temple laid in ruin for 70 years. And you have to understand why the rebuilding of the temple was so important to the children of Israel. It represented God's presence in the midst of the community of Israel. In the midst of the nation. So how does Haggai fit into the rebuilding of the temple and what is his message to us today? Now, as I said earlier, Haggai was one of the prophets during the time of Ezra. We see it in Ezra 5. And his, his message is relatively simple. And, and I think it's a message that we can have today. Don't lose heart. Don't quit. Finish. Keep going every day. Take another small step today. And that's his message to these people. Don't quit. Be faithful. Amen. You'll, you'll never go wrong. You'll never go wrong in doing what's right. That's right. Amen. You'll never go wrong. Even if it leads to your death, you'll never go wrong in doing what's right. Amen. Finish the job. And that, that was pretty much the message that, that Ezra, or excuse me, that Haggai had for these people. We read the New Testament. I mean, the same message comes in, in the New Testament. We read in Philippians 1 6. We've all got this passage memorized, don't we? <clears throat> say yes. No. No. <laughs> well, once I say it, I know Carol knows it. I am confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perfect it till the day of Christ Jesus. He's going he's gonna to see that. He's going to see it to the end. We see it also in Galatians 6.9. This was one of, the, one of the first verses I learned when I became a new believer. It's Galatians 6.9. It says, Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time you will reap if you do not grow weary. And so the message <clears throat> in the Old Testament, you know, don't quit, don't lose heart, be faithful. It's, it's still there in the, in the New Testament. I mean... <clears throat> Don't lose heart. Amen. This is this is I think for us today. Don't lose heart in reading scripture daily. Amen. Reorder reorder your priorities. <coughs> if you gotta change some things, let's change some things. Right. Don't lose heart. Amen. In due time, you're gonna reap a benefit. Amen. Amen. If you don't get it. That's right. I, I I will make the promise to you. 
If you do the little things every day this year, end of this year, you're going to look back and you're going to go, wow, that was, God did some miraculous things, not only in my heart, not only did he transform me, because that's the power of God's work. It's the power of God unto salvation. He did some miraculous things in my heart, but he's going to do some miraculous things to those around me. I mean, let that sink in for just a minute. Mm -hmm. Think about this. At the end of the year, do you want to be in the same place? No. Or do you want to be in a, in a better place? You want to be down the road, so to speak, mm -hmm. in your spiritual walk with the Lord. Amen. I mean, that I do. I want to continue to grow and to, and to mature and to become more like Christ. That should be our purpose. And that, that's kind of what uh, he's saying. Don't lose heart. Be faithful. Make sure that you're reading God's Word every day. Make sure that, that even when you're exhausted on Wednesday night, that you come here. Or maybe it's not Wednesday night that you come. You come to MOZ yesterday. And you're part of that. Or the ladies' Bible study. Or whatever ministry it is that you're involved in. Make sure that you're being faithful to attend. Because that's where iron sharpens iron. <clears throat> Excuse me. Iron sharpens iron. So one man causes another to become more like Christ. Right. That's, that's the importance of, of, of the meeting together. We come together, we look at God's Word, we discuss God's Word, we talk about what God... We talk about the things that we have been reading, we look at what it is, and we together grow in the grace of God. And then the last one, just the giving. Looking at God's faithfulness. Then it's awesome to see God's faithfulness. Amen. I, mean, I, I just encourage you, stop fighting, stop wrestling, be faithful. Amen. Be faithful. Amen. Well, let's go back to Haggai. And these are the four messages the Lord has from the book of Haggai. And like I said, we're probably not going to get to the all four of them. But we're going to try to get the first two. We will have the first one for sure. It says, the first one, it says, are you putting yourself ahead of the Lord? That's the question. Who, who's, who's, who's the boss, so to speak? I mean, who's first in your life? Are your priorities first or are God's priorities first? Who are you putting first? And the second one is, are you looking back or are you looking ahead? Yes, God's behind us. Yes, He's done a mighty work in my life. And he's, he's done some awesome things in my life. But you know what? God's in front of me. He's beckoning me forward. saying, here I am. Come. We learn from our past. Our past has brought me to the place I'm at right now. But you know what? I'm to take a step forward. That's right. Not a step backwards. Amen. And I think, that's, I think it's really important for us all to hear this. Are you looking back? Oh, all the leaks. The fish, all the things that we had in Israel, all that. This is what, remember the children of Israel when they got into the promised land? They were remembering all the good things they had. They were slaves, but they had all kinds of food. They were giving up their freedom for fish, for leeks, for cucumbers, for stuff. God's ahead of us. Let's make sure that we're continually taking little steps of faith every day. Believing, trusting, obeying, doing what we know to be right. Ordering our priorities according to God's Word. Not according to my will and my words. Third message is, is it half-hearted obedience? Are, are you doing it, but are you kind of doing it because you have to? Not because you want to. And there's a difference here. Amen. I mean, sometimes my, my dad, he'd tell me, Richard, go clean your room. And it's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I mean, all, everybody's a parent have heard, has heard this, right? Yeah. I mean, we all, you, you kids, you don't get anything over us. They don't want to go clean the room. That's right. They have to go clean the room. And the day they start wanting to go clean the room, you need to go make sure that 
they haven't lost their mind. So. No, I mean, are you serving the Lord? Are you doing these things because it's, it's a duty? Or are you doing these things because it's a delight? We should delight in the Lord. Amen. That should be our passion. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes I do things because I know I'm supposed to. And it's not, okay, I have to be, uh, sometimes, some Wednesday nights I'm here and I'm like going, oh, I'm tired, been here all day. I'm going to be here another couple of hours. I do things not because it's a great joy, but I know there's a blessing. Right. And then the last one. From fear to faith. So let's look at that first message. Are you putting yourself ahead of the Lord? Verses 1 through 15. Chapter 1 reveals that the governor, the priest, the people, uh, that, uh, that the reason they were all frustrated is because they had tried to make their own lives comfortable while they were neglecting the temple. Sixteen years had passed since the foundation had been laid and it was still unfinished. Now, I'm going to spiritualize this a little bit. And we're talking about the temple. We don't go to the temple today, do we? Say no. No, no. Good, thank you. That's good. But I want you to read 1 Corinthians 3.16. Turn there for a minute. It says... I am the temple. You are the temple. Do go there. And so the question is, are you building the temple or are you letting the, your temple lay idle? So who has 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 3.16? Thank you, sir. We are the temple of God. You see, if you're not building first the kingdom of God, then all these things are not being added to you. And this is, this is where most of us struggle. I mean, most of us are consumed with ourselves. And, and we forget if we actually would put God first and we'd actually do the things that God wants us to do, everything that we're striving for and we're trying to get, God's going to add to you. And that's what you have to, and this is, I say this is where we struggle. This is where Richard struggles. He knows what he's supposed to do. He knows that there's a blessing. He knows that God's uh, uh, going to add these things to me, but he's trying in his own effort to grab a hold of it and hang on to it. And I think this is what Haggai uh, uh, this is going on in Haggai. Look at, look at verse 5. He, he's asking the question. And I'm going to read verses 4, 5, and 6. But he's asking the question in verse 5. He says, Is it time for you yourself to dwell in your paneled houses while the house of the Lord, Lord for the house lies desolate? In other words, their house looks really good. But the temple, the, the, only the foundations are laid. And he's, he's asking this question, Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider the results of what you're doing, in other words. So let me ask you this question. Look at your life. Are you, if you're not reading, if you're not studying, if you're not doing the small things every day, look at your life and tell me how things are going. Most of the time, it's going to be just like what's happening here in Haggai. You're not doing the small things every day, and God is not speaking, God is not talking. And in verse 6, he says, You have sown much, but the harvest, but harvest little. You eat, but there's not enough to be satisfied. You drink, but there's not enough to become drunk. You put on clothes, but, uh, but no one is warm. You earn, this is what I like. You who earn, earn wages to put it in a purse with holes. When we are putting ourselves and our own priorities before the Lord, we're earning money and we're putting it in a pocket with a hole in it. Well, that's what he's telling us. That's the, that's the ideal, that, that, that's the question that Haggai has for us. And, and you can't pass over this question. I, I believe it is for us. 
If you devote yourself to sowing and eating and drinking and clothing yourselves, and you neglect the temple, you neglect your own personal spiritual walk with the Lord, you're going to live a defeated life. Amen. You'll have a lot of stuff. You'll have a lot of goods. But your own personal walk with the Lord is going to be hollow. And you're, and you're not going to have enough in, in you to give out. You will live a defeated life. If you spend your time, your energy, seeking comfort, security from the world, and you don't spend time for the glory of God, you will never be satisfied. Amen. Just as simple as I can put it. You're going to always be looking for the next thing. What else is going to satisfy you? What next toy are you going to get? But if you seek first the kingdom of God, if you will dare to take a choice and take a chance and trust God and seek His kingdom and His glory first, everything that you need is going to be added to you. might not be exactly what you want. might not be exactly what you think you need, but it's going to be exactly what God has for you. That's and right. that's personally, that's what I want. Yeah. There's a lot of, lot of things that I want. But there's a lot of things. I want the things that God wants for me. Right. Amen. <clears throat> the temple of the Old Testament existed for the purpose of the glory of God. Right. Amen. And looking at 1 Corinthians 3, your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, exists for the purpose of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Are you allowing God to live through you in a manner that it reflects that glory? Let me read a couple of passages to you. This is Exodus 40, verses 35 and 36. It says, After, uh, after Moses had finished and erected the tabernacle, it says, And the cloud covered the tent of the meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of the meeting because the, sat, the cloud settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Let me tell you something, guys. If you'll do these little things, if you'll be faithful in the little things, the Holy Spirit will so indwell you, it, it'll be awesome. Amen. And, Amen. And he will cause you to be like Him. Right. I don't know how more to tell you this. And we all want this. And and this is not a a this is what scripture says. I know that we're all at the moment that we become believers, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit to down payment. But every day that we we either walk in the flesh or we walk in the spirit. That's right. And every day that we choose to walk in the spirit, the Holy Spirit just builds and encourages and grows. And you know what? People around you are going to see it. I was telling you a story about my daughter. The guy that she knows from Georgia, she, she shares the gospel with him every day. And everybody in, in, uh, in her place of employment knows something's different about that girl. She has changed the culture. The I mean, she hangs out with a bunch of guys that are engineers. I mean, they're pretty boring. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're a bunch of nerds. They got pocket pencils. I mean, you think about this. You know, yeah, she's changed the culture because she's allowing the Holy Spirit to live through it. Right. Praise God. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Same thing happened in 1 Kings 8, verse 10. This is after Solomon filled, finishes and dedicates the temple. Verse 11, excuse me, verse 10, it says, And the priest came out of the holy place. A cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Hmm. And it's awesome. Amen. When you allow the Holy Spirit to so dwell you, People are going to notice. Right. But let me tell you something. You, you, you got to change your, your priorities. 
I mean, you can't just keep on doing what you're doing. you got to say, okay, God, I'm going to make some choices. Mm-hmm. And this is what, this is what Haggai's telling the people. you got to make some choices. you got to finish the temple. you got to keep working on the temple, you and I. you got to do the little things. you got to take steps of faith every day. That's right. Listen, I, and again, I'm going to tell you, if you will start, if you'll just take a chance, by the end of the year, you'll see a total difference. Everybody around you and your family will see a difference in who you are. Amen. Now, I've got another question for you. What do you want? See, God's not going to force this on you. We're not going to force Vision 2020. We, we're not going to force you. To, I can't come home and make sure you're reading the Bible. I mean, I can't force this on you. So the question is, what do you want? That's the question. Do you want the glory of the Lord to fill the temple? Or are you happy with where you're at? Well, the second message. This is, are you looking back? Are you looking forward? And I'm going to read, these are, this is chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. I'm, I'm going to read this passage. It says, on the, 21st, on the 21st of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came to Haggai, the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw the temple in its former glory? In other words, who around you remembers the glory of the temple that was destroyed 70 years ago? Because it was awesome. Who around you uh, uh, saw the temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? Does it not seem to you like nothing in comparison? But now take courage, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Take courage also, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and all the people of the land. Take courage, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. As for the promise which I made to you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit is abiding in your midst. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and all the dry land, and I will shake the nations, and they will come with wealth of all the nations, and I will fill the house with glory, says the Lord. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter, this is what I like, the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. In this place, I will give you peace, declares the Lord. They're looking around, and they're seeing what they've... They're seeing seeing a hole in the ground, is what they're seeing. If you've ever seen a foundation of a building, all it is is a hole in the ground. they got concrete. Today, we have steel in it. They don't see the temple. They remember the temple, but they're not seeing the temple. All they're seeing... I remember... we were uh, going to a church in, in Lubbock, Texas, Trinity Church, and for a long time, it was out on the loop, if you know anything about Lubbock. It's on Loop 289 in University, and for 10 years, there was a hole in the ground, and people were making fun of them. You know, uh, there's just a hole in the ground. Now you ought to see the building now. I mean, yeah, there was a hole in the ground for a while because they were, they were doing it in phases, just like we did this building. And they took their time and they did it and they were they built a, a huge building, at 12,000 people. So it was a huge building. They did it debt free. Hmm. This is kind of like what we're doing here. We did ours in phases. And, you know, we saw the up and it, upstairs it looked really nice. And But you go downstairs and it was just concrete floors and concrete walls. But now you go downstairs. The former glory... It, this one, verse 9, it's not going to compare. The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former. Think about your life right now. Think about where you're at right now. Some of you are doing pretty good. But if you take a chance, if you trust God, if you take small steps, and if you continue to take small steps, 
the end of the year, it's not even going to compare with what's going on. Amen. It's going to pale in comparison to what you're going to look like if you do these things. And according to verse 1, the message comes on the 21st day of the seventh month. Little less than a month after the people had begun to build, and it seems as though the work had slowed or come to a complete stop because Hagar's message is that they take courage and they get to work. I got another question for you. Anybody know what today is? Today, it's a good one. February the 9th, all those things. Let me ask you a different question. How many of you made New Year's resolutions? Oh, come on. I got one. Okay, I got one. Well, y'all know what today is, didn't you? This is about the time, give or take a week or two, when we throw those resolutions away, right? Isn't it? I mean, we, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose 500 pounds. Yes! We make these crazy, or I'm going to do a thousand push-ups, a thousand chin-ups, and a thousand sit-ups every week. And you do 10 push-ups and you're going, oh man, you know, it's like, we make these crazy, these crazy <coughs> resolutions. And you know, by this time, February, they're gone. I mean, do one of them. Do one of the Vision 24. I mean, if that's all you can do, I encourage you, read your Bible. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm actually have. I don't ever make resolutions. I just don't. I just chose not to make a vow and then not keep it. But I've made four this year, and I'm slowly adding them. Uh, Sheila and I, we've become mall walkers. Y'all know what mall walkers are. We're there. We go from from Barnes and Nobles to Target. There and back. We do it three times. And we're trying to do this as pure, as much as we can. And hopefully we can do it three times. Sometimes it's two, but that's one of our resolutions. Another one, uh, I'm, I've done it, and I've, I'm staying faithful to it. I'm trying to add the third one. Right now I'm struggling with the third one because it's like time and all that stuff, but I'm going to make sure that I do two of those exceptionally well. And hopefully in the next week or, or month or so, I can add that third one. Because the time summer comes around, I'm going to ride a thousand miles on my bike. So that's those are my goals. But I'm doing right now. I'm being faithful in what I can do. And I encourage you to do that. If all you can do is is read your Bible, and if all you can do is read for five minutes every day, do it. Be faithful in doing that. And when you can, add the next one. And then when you can't add the third one. But you got to be about the little things every day. It, don't, don't bite off these. I don't, I don't even weigh five. I don't know where the 295 pounds are going to come. And that's most of us. We, we make these, these resolutions. We make these goals that we know we're not going to be able to keep. Take small bites. Chapter 2, verse 4, it says, But take courage, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Take courage also, Joshua, son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest, and all the people in the land. Take courage, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord. If you'll do these, God will be with you, and God will give you the ability to do these things. Right. But again, you've got to be faithful every day to take a step to go forward. I, I just I don't know how else to tell you this, but I just encourage you, be faithful in the little things. So what makes this, this message so practical is that you can see it, you, you can see it in your own personal life. You know, we get caught up again in the fog of life. We get caught up in, in all the things that we're doing. And you, you have to this is, this is true. You have to prioritize your life. Amen. You have to decide what's important. And then be about those things. Well, verse 3 shows, shows why they became uh, discouraged. 
Haggai asks, who is left among you who saw the house in its former glory? He's asking, remember the glory. Remember what it looked like. Who is left that saw it? And how does it look now? It's not as nothing in your eyes. These workers were discouraged because of the memory of how glorious the temple used to be. Seventy years ago, it stood in this very spot with all the glory and the grandeur and the magnificent achievement that Solomon had done and the Lord's presence was there. How do you see it now? How do you see your life now? Do you see it as nothing? Again, wait till the end of the year. Be faithful in the small things every day. And you will see how the glory of the Lord surpasses your life what it looks like today and what it will look like then. And, and I want to say, you don't have to match what you used to be or what someone else used to be or what someone else says you have to be. You only have to be faithful. Amen. That's what you need to remember. You only have to be faithful. Remember, he says, I'm with you. He's there with you. Well, in Ezra chapter 3, verses 10 through 13, he says, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the, of the Lord, the priests and all their vestments came forward, and the temple and the Levites and the sons of Asaph were symbols, and they praised the Lord according to the directions of David, the king of Israel, and they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever towards Israel. And all the people shouted with great shouts of joy. With, uh, then they praised the Lord because the foundations of the house were laid. But many of the priests and the Levites and the heads of the, uh, the, uh, the father's house, old men who seen the first house, wept with a loud voice when they saw the foundations of this house being laid. Though they, uh, though many shouted uh, aloud with joy, so that the people could not distinguish the shouts of joy from the shouts of the people weeping, for the people shouted with a great shout, and the sound was heard far away. Because of this discouragement, they were relaxed with their zeal to finish the temple. They remembered what they saw. And they just, I don't want to say they gave up, but that passion. I mean, this is right now. You made that resolution, finish that resolution. You've seen what it's been like. I, again, I just tell you, make sure that you're doing the little things today. Make sure you're doing the little things today. Pour, you know, you pour yourself into a job, you pour yourself into, into work, and you know, you get caught up in life issues and work and family, and then you look across town, you look across the aisle, and you see somebody else. Don't get caught up in these things. Right. Get caught up in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't get discouraged. And hey, guys, message, take courage. Fear not. I'm with you. Let's pray. Lord, we, we just thank you again for this day. We thank you again for your mercy. And we thank you again for this message. And I, I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray, God, that we would do just that. We would take courage. We would look at uh, what you're doing in our lives. We wouldn't look at what it looks like, but we would look at what you're doing. And God, we would be encouraged to take another step. And we would be encouraged not to fear to take another step, but we would learn to walk by faith, knowing that you, God, are with us, knowing that you, God, are going to lead us, knowing that you, God, are going to direct us. And so we, again, just thank you. Uh, we thank you for your mercy. 
And Lord, we thank you for when that temple is going to be finished. When you are erected and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And what it's going to look like. And we're going to be able to point others to Christ. And so, Lord, again, I just thank you for this message from Haggai. I pray for my brothers and sisters that we, again, will be faithful. Thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs>